Hey everyone, in here with Train Like a Fight, and this week we are sticking with the theme of last week's video. If you haven't seen that, I talked about a really nice Nemo Tensor sleeping pad that I'm actually going to be using to hopefully replace my standard issue Army sleeping pad. And this week we are going to talk about some more sur er, outdoors gear, and this is the Snug Pack Special Forces sleeping bag. This is a really cool, lightweight sleeping bag that I'm hoping to use to eventually replace my standard issue army sleeping bag. Uh, those of you who haven't seen my other videos, yes I am in the army, I just have some time off right now, so that's why I have the facial hair. So uh, onto the sleeping bag itself, this thing is really cool uh, and uh, I'm actually going to break out both of these sleeping bags to give you guys a really good idea of just uh, why I picked up the special forces Alright everyone, the bag. first thing I want to hit on are the sizes of the two sleeping bags. Now you can obviously tell the army issue sleeping bag. This is only the the uh, more like the warmer weather sleeping bag. Both of these bags are rated to 32 degrees Fahrenheit as their absolute low, uh, so freezing. But uh, this guy is about the size of a basketball, and this one is just about half the size of it. And so uh, now there is, the big reason for that is also because there is a lot of space inside of this stuff sack. Uh, this guy is filled to the brim. Really, I mean, Snug Pack made this guy to fit this sleeping bag and only this sleeping bag. This guy is made to fit a bivy cover inside of it along with the uh, the sleeping bag itself. So I don't have the bivy cover on here right now because Snug Pack also makes a bivy cover that one, one of these days I will get it. But right now we are just comparing sleeping bags. And I did try to stuff the Army Issues sleeping bag inside of the Snug Pack stuff sack just to make sure that I didn't accidentally just pick up a, uh, a, a smaller stuff sack essentially. So uh, I did try that out and the Army Issue sleeping bag is slightly larger in size than the Snug Pack one. So you will not be able to fit a, your Army Issue sleeping bag inside of one of these. So this guy is smaller, it is a little bit lighter, uh, but it's actually not an incredibly lightweight sleeping system. Um, it actually says it's uh, 42 ounces, so that's definitely not incredibly lightweight like some sleeping bags out there, but it is a very tough, robust design. Alright everyone, I got both sleeping bags laid out right now, and on your right we have the Snug Pack Special Forces 1, and then on your left we have my standard issue uh, Army sleeping bag. So, uh, we're going to just really get into some of the similarities and differences between the two because both of them are temperature rated to 32 degrees, so really I'm not going to do any testing between which one's warmer than the other because they both have the same temperature rating. And uh, I've, been, I've used this guy many times and I know for a fact that it is good down to 32 degrees. It is a very good sleeping bag. It's kept me warm and dry in many nasty field training uh, scenarios. But um, so to start with, uh, both of them are mummy bags, by the way. and. The, the first thing I really do want to hit on are the zippers. So the zipper on the Special Forces 1, it, it's a good zipper. Uh, it's like most of your standard sleeping bags out there today. It's not a, uh, like a big oversized zipper. Uh, it seems pretty tough, but the Army Issue 1 is this massive, really just over-engineered over zipper, and I really like these Army Issued zippers. And this is kind of how most military issued equipment is. They have these gigantic oversized zippers because we're usually very hard on our equipment. So I do like that about it a lot. I like how they have these gigantic zipper pulls on it. Now the Special Forces does have a large zipper pull on it. Uh, right here, it's not nearly as big as the Army one. The only thing I don't like is that there is no zipper pull on the inside. Now the uh, there is a zipper pull on the inside of this one. so. In the middle of the night, uh, you're not going to be fumbling around looking for a little tiny zipper tab. You can just grab the big cord and pull it. It's not very hard for me, though, to add a piece of paracord to this one, so really not a big deal breaker there. Uh, I do like how the zipper runs down the, the front of the Special Forces. Uh, I found that I, it's just really easy to get in and out of the sleeping bag. Uh, having that zipper just right there by your chin, uh, so in the middle of the night you need a get out of your sleeping bag, whatever, you just got to reach up, pull down, very easy to get in and out of. The uh, Army Issue one is like most of your sleeping bags, it's all along the side. Uh, again, it's it's still a good design, it's just uh, I found that this is a little easier to access, a little easier to use than the Army Issue one. 
as for the external material of both sleeping bags, the uh, the army issued one uses a pretty typical nylon ripstop material. The snug pack it doesn't have that nylon ripstop grid pattern. It does have kind of a, a cool patterning to it. Here, I'll actually show you guys real quick. Uh, hopefully, the camera will focus on it. But yeah, it's got this real interesting pattern to it. And uh, I don't know if that serves any purpose besides aesthetics. But uh, from what I can tell, both have a pretty similar build material on the inside and the outside. Now, uh, the uh, the bottom of the Special Forces does have these little loops here for you can you can actually hang up this sleeping bag to let it dry out if you ever get it wet. Uh, the Army issue one doesn't have anything like that on the bottom. Now, moving up to the uh, the collar of the Special Forces sleeping bag, the um, the actual the way to cinch down around the uh, the collar of it is very simple. It's just got this one cord, one toggle, very easy to pull and cinch it down. Now, and it's very easy to loosen up too. Now, on the Army one, you actually have two very large cords here, and I'm not a big fan of this system because these cords tend to get tangled up with each other a lot, and uh, there's a lot of excess cordage on this guy. Uh, when you try to cinch it down, you always, you'll end up with this two extra feet of extra cord. You can't just pull it out like you can with a snug pack. You actually have to run it back through. Uh, it's a little harder to loosen up to. you got to work your way around it to loosen it up. So that's one disadvantage right there with the Army issue one, personally for me. I just don't like having this kind of rat's nest of, of cordage uh, that you have to deal with. There is a little Velcro retainer right here to kind of keep your keep the top of the bag together so your zipper doesn't pull apart and go uh, and unzip on you. So uh, pretty basic, just a little Velcro strip on the Army one. On the Snug Pack, the, it's the same idea. It's just a uh, it's a larger panel here. So I don't know if that offers a better advantage. It just looks a little nicer in my opinion. Uh, seems a little more just. Uh, less thrown together like the army one. The army one just looks like they slapped a piece of velcro on it. This actually looks like it was like a little thought went into it that was actually integrated into the sleeping bag itself. Uh, also going back to the zippers, I don't know if they're YKK or not. It doesn't say YKK on the zipper of the snug pack and neither does it say that on the army issue. But I'm sure they're, they're good zippers nonetheless. Um, now on the inside of the sleeping bag itself, there are these little uh, pieces of nylon that run all the way down along the zipper. I'm assuming that is to create a little bit of windproofing on the inside of the snug pack. And so, uh, I mean, again, little, little things like that are always good to see. Uh, now on the Army one, it actually does have that, but theirs is a very large insulated baffle. And uh, this is actually much nicer, in my opinion, than the snug packs. It's more durable, it's insulated, so uh, you're really not going to lose as much heat as easily uh, with the Army sleeping bag. So uh, it's not a big deal breaker for me either with the snug pack from what I have done with it. It holds up very well. It is a very warm sleeping bag. Now as for the material, the fill material, it is a uh, Prima Loft, which is snug packs. Uh, filler that they use on theirs. I'm not quite sure what the Army issue one is. Uh, it's it's definitely it's denser. It's a little heavier than the snug packs. The snug packs is very light and kind of fluffy. Uh, the the actual internal material, uh, the actual like liner of this guy, they say it's kind of like a uh, foil material to help reflect your body heat back at you. So as far as I know, the Army one does not have that. They just the way they they insulate it, or they, the way you stay warm inside this one is just with a lot of heavy material, whereas this guy, there's a little more technology that went into it. Now, on the inside of the snug pack, uh, one other thing that I really like about it is there is a reinforced foot box here. So if you wear your boots inside of this guy, you're not gonna tear it up. It is a slightly stronger material slightly stronger nylon although if you were to wear your boots inside this thing I would highly recommend getting their uh, they actually have a liner 
that is like pretty much an entire like uh, sleeve of nylon that uh, can clip into these uh, they have little loops on the bottom of the sleeping bag so it's very nice that they have that kind of attention to detail they know that guys like me are going to maybe be doing patrol base operations and I'm gonna need to make get out of my sleeping bag in the middle of the night while I'm wearing my boots or go to bed in my boots or whatnot so it's cool that they already reinforced the foot box, but they also offer a, an additional liner that can uh, give you a little more strength. And uh, the nice thing about that is if you get that liner filled with mud and dirt and leaves and whatnot, that you can just throw in your washing machine. You cannot just throw a sleeping bag in your washing machine. You'll just tear it up. So that's pretty much it for the Snug Pack Special Forces sleeping bag. Uh, as you guys can tell, they are uh, very similar, these two sleeping bags. Actually, one last thing I do want to hit on uh, is how you actually attach uh, extra pieces to these sleeping bags. So the, um, the Snug Pack has a lot of extra attachments. You can get the Special Forces 2, which is rated for even colder weather. So if you combine this with the Special Forces 2, you can get all the way down to 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Same thing with the Army Issue 1. You can actually add layers to this guy. And the Army Issue 1 is very simple the way you do it. You got these big old snaps on the side of it and you just snap the sleeping bag into it along with the bivy cover. The Special Forces uses a baffle system as they call it and so essentially you connect the zippers to or the zipper or the zippers of the Special Forces 1 and the Special Forces 2 to uh, this baffle and then it connects both of them together so now you just use one large zipper to open and shut both at the same time. Now that is nice because you only have one zipper to deal with rather than two zippers. But when it comes to adding a bivy sack to this to the special forces, they don't have any way of connecting the bivy sack to the sleeping bag itself. So that is one big disadvantage in my opinion. The army issue one, everything connects together. It's all one large integrated system, and I really like that about it. The only thing I don't like about the army issue one is it's incredibly heavy. When you have all three parts together, I think the full sleep system weighs close to 11 pounds. So that's a very, very heavy sleep system. I believe this one is about 8 or 9 pounds when you have it all integrated together. But, uh, yeah, so I'm always using bivy sacks uh, when you're camping with the Army, I guess you'd call it. When you're doing field training, you're always going to use your bivy sack because you never know when you're going to get some rain, sleet, snow, whatever. And that bivy sack is going to keep the actual sleeping bag from getting soaking wet and ruining the sleeping bag itself. So that is the only disadvantage I really saw with the Snug Pack in general. But overall, I think this thing is a very promising, very good sleeping bag. And I really hope that it's going to be a viable option to uh, replace my Army Issue sleeping bag. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you found it helpful, remember to leave a like, comment if you uh, have any questions, anything like that. And guys, as always, remember to train like you fight.